G'day and welcome to MW Laser, my name is Matthew. Now in October 2020 I took delivery of this Cloudray laser machine, the CR1390. Now many viewers have seen this featured in some of the videos that I've got here on my YouTube channel and have been asking a lot of questions about it. And it was always my intention to use it and uh, test it out um, for my own business and my own work and then be able to provide an informative video about the machine to you, the viewers. So before I make any more modifications to this machine, I thought it'd be a good idea to stop and do this video to show you the machine, some of its features, some things I like and don't like about this machine. Now this is not supposed to be a full spec video on this laser machine because uh, these machines can be customized to suit your requirements. So if you uh, are interested in one of these machines, you can contact Cloudray and they can uh, make the modifications and adjustments to suit the requirements you need with the different features, controllers and things like that. Now without giving you the summary straight up front, uh, I'm going to go over the uh, features of this machine. Now there are some very good features of this machine. There are one or two features that are not quite right and I'll also present those as well just to remain unbiased. So let's have a look at the structure of the machine. Now the chassis and enclosure is extremely well built. It's very solid with rolling wheels and the screw down support feet to maintain stability of the machine. And the side panels and doors have access all round for maintenance and cleaning. Now one feature I like about this model is the pass through feature, which I can cut down large sheets of material. However, in my case, when I want to use this feature, I have to disengage the support feet and then roll the machine away from the wall. But the machine is mobile enough to move by a single person. The machine lid is made very easy to open with the gas support struts and it opens far enough to be out of the way so that you don't hit your head on the open lid when positioning material into the machine. Now this machine was supplied with a metal head cloud ray laser 130 watt laser tube. Now this laser tube is a 1650 millimeters long with a diameter of 80 millimeters. Now the laser tube is powered by an MYJG 150 watt power supply unit which can be accessed by opening the left side panel and the 150 watt power supply unit also has a remote digital and milliamp display meter on the top of the machine. Now on a daily basis in my business I've been using this machine to cut uh, mainly acrylics and timbers from uh, one millimeter all the way up to 12 millimeters. However, it is capable of doing more due to the occasional uh, softwood uh, material of up to about an inch thick or 25 millimeters thick where I can cut pine and things like that. And that's obviously with the right lens selection and for more information on lens selections for your laser machine, check out my video on lens selection and the ramp test. Now this machine features a red dot laser and a CO2 laser beam combining unit and that is positioned between mirror 1 and mirror 2 and uh, projects the uh, red dot through to the laser nozzle and onto the work area so you have a more precise positioning of your laser head. Now the lens tube assembly allows for multiple focal length lenses to be installed. So you could have a two inch, a two and a half inch or a four inch lens that you can install in this laser tube, uh, lens tube. And this can be made easier if you purchase these additional uh, lens tubes for each of your focal length lenses. So you can change them out easily without the need to remove the lens from the tube. And I highly recommend this option if you use more than one focal length lens in your machine. The cutting area of this machine is 1300 by 900 millimeters and that's using the linear guide rails with the motion provided by Leadshine hybrid stepper motors for the X and the Y axis. Now the configuration of this machine offers the option of using the alloy blade, blade table as you can see here with these removable blades or the honeycomb that makes up the Z axis lift bed. Now the Z-axis lift bed is driven by two stepper motors, belts and good quality ball screws that have a smooth and quick motion. Now when using the blade table, manual focusing of the lens is achieved by moving the lens tube to the required height and then locking it into position. Now one feature that I do find a little bit disappointing is that when I would like to use the honeycomb table, I need to remove all the blades and the support bracket and then raise the Z-axis honeycomb table into position. The Z-axis has a very good length of travel, allowing you to easily put in large objects to engrave on, etc. Uh, however, on this machine, the honeycomb table is not removable for cleaning. And if you're using the blade table, it, the honeycomb table collects all the cut-offs and uh, those smaller parts which fall through, and they can get sometimes lodged in the honeycomb structure. 
So to avoid this while I'm using the blades, I often place something underneath the blades very low down to collect those parts and those cutoffs that fall through. Now the controller that's installed on this machine is the CloudRay Ruida RDC6432G controller. It's capable of motion for up to three axes, X, Y, Z, or U. However, this can be ordered with other Ruida controllers such as the RDC6445G or the RDC6445GT, which is their new touchscreen controller. Now this controller, the RDC6432G, is uh, compatible with RDWorks version 8, as well as Lightburn software. It has connectivity to your PC via USB or Ethernet, as well as your USB disk. It is not compatible with the Ruida wireless handle, however, if the controller is connected on a network, you are able to use the Ruida app installed on your smartphone or device. Now the controller has a good sized screen with the buttons are well placed for ease of operating the machine. But I don't find that the grey buttons with the black text easy to read, but you do become familiar with the location of these buttons over time, so that becomes less of an issue. Now the menu system on this controller is limited and most of the configuration of vendor and user settings need to be set using the PC software, that's either RDWorks or Lightburn. On this particular machine I do not have autofocus installed. However, if you require it to control the system, it's capable of autofocus. As I mentioned earlier, the blade table is above the Z-axis lift bed. Therefore, the autofocus would only be able to operate when using the honeycomb table with the blades removed. Now, the machine was shipped with a CW5200 chiller, the exhaust fan and the ducting, as well as a small air pump. Now I've already made the change to use and install a large air compressor which helps me achieve clean cuts while cutting timber materials. Now one feature that I use and highly recommend is the Ultimate Air Assist which allows you to control air on and air off for separate layers of work in the software. Now on these machines there's also the auto manual option switch installed on the interface panel. And for more on Ultimate Air Assist check out my video on that upgrade if you haven't already got it installed on your machine. Now when I received the machine, I didn't have a rotary attachment port, so it's currently covered over. However, you can have it pre-installed by the manufacturer with a stepper driver if required. Now this feature I will be installing myself, possibly in a future video. Now looking inside the machine's electrical enclosure, you'll find high quality components which are securely mounted, securely wired and labelled in a very tidy arrangement. Now all the switches and connections on the machine are also well labelled and easily identifiable. Now overall this machine has been performing extremely well with everything that I've thrown at it with my business. Now I do do a lot of cutting of uh, acrylic, timbers, plies, cork, as well as engraving on larger objects like the sides of boxes, trays or small barrels. So that Z-axis lift gives me the height that I need to be able to put large objects in, so that's a, a bonus feature of this machine. Uh, it's got a very good length of travel for that uh, Z-axis. Now, as I mentioned, with the blades on top, that is one thing that uh, could be improved upon. Taking the blades out to use that Z-axis lift is a little bit disappointing, but uh, it's not a deal breaker for me. Now, the controller, as you'd expect from a Ruida, it's a good quality controller. It is an entry-level controller, only capable of doing um, the uh, three-axis control. Um, and the menu functions on that controller uh, are very limited. So most of the vendor settings and user settings are done via the software. Now I've received an upgrade uh, controller for the new Ruida touchscreen model, the RDC6445 GT5, which I'll install soon and provide a video about that controller when that upgrade is complete. Now if you'd like more information on this machine or other CloudRay laser machines, contact them directly via their website at www.cloudraylaser.com. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Now it was a very quick overview. I didn't want to make it uh, long-winded and more of an advertisement because that's not what this video was intended to be. It was more to answer some of the questions on how the machine's put together and what it looks like and some of the things I like and don't like about it. And I wanted to do that video before I upgraded and did more changes to it. And some of those changes are just my own personal preference and don't discount the performance of the machine. Until next time, take care. Cheers.